Okay, on this part, I'm going to handle uh, painting these. I'm going to be going with a red. I'm, my concept for painting these and the look that I'm going for is going to be red with the uh, normal GTO logo that the stock has. And so it's going to appear stock, but, you know, Brembo. So what these might have looked like had these been offered from the factory. So here we have... Uh, Obviously the two six piston fronts and the two four piston rears and they're all sanded down. Th these three are ready. This one I still have to do. So I'm using the G2 uh, caliper paint system and for the prep work I'm running over everything with this uh, 220 by hand. Just getting everything that I can. You can kind of see how I hit the high spots more than anything else and so the problem that you have when you try to hand sand these like that is that there's so many nooks and crannies especially when you get to these all this stuff down in here that you just you're never going to be able to sand it all with that 220 by hand so that in conjunction with a fine sanding sponge is what i'm going over with at first to take care of the v logo so that you don't see any of that in the reflection because you can sort of you can sort of see that in the reflection so with these there, well, you can't see anything on that one because it's been sanded. So then after you've gotten everything that you can get hand sanding with the 220 and the sponge, I then move on to this. Now this is a, uh, we use these to abrade between coats on wood floors or under a buffer. And it's like a Scotch-Brite pad, but it's coarser than the normal. Usually we use a maroon pad that's, I think, a grit equivalent of 320 grit. This is coarser than that. I don't know what the actual grit is, but this, given that it's more spongy and easier to like, you know, fold up into a little whatever and get down into the nooks and crannies, that's what I'll go over everything with at the very end, um, just to make sure that I've got some kind of a mechanical bond with this system. But I did read somewhere that the G2 kit is probably going to be more forgiving on prep work since it's a two-part epoxy type paint. So I'm hoping that that will... Uh, help and so everything i read suggests that that little can that it comes in is more than enough for four what it calls standard calipers well obviously these are not standard so but even having said that a lot of guys said that they, they used that on these said it was more than enough for three coats but i'm still skeptical so what i'm going to do is start off by painting everything that you see the front and the tops, I guess, that everything you see with the wheel on as the first coat. And then I'll paint everything as a second coat. And then I'll just kind of see how much paint I have left from there. And, uh, you know, if I've got enough to do the whole thing again, then I will. But I want to make sure that everything you see looks good and glossy and all that. And then all I really care about for everything that you can't see with the wheel on is just that it appears red. So, and you know, I don't want McDonald's looking calipers on this thing. So I'm going to start sanding this last one down and uh, then we'll start mixing up some paint and painting these. So one thing I totally forgot to mention during all this filming is that on the CTSV calipers, they're actually on the opposite side of the rotor as the GTO. So they, the fronts are, are behind the rotor and the uh, rears are in front of the rotor. And so when you flip them over to install them on the correct side for the GTO, the bleeders are pointing down and the crossover tubes are at the top. And obviously that's not going to allow you to bleed them properly. So one thing you do have to do if you use CTSV calipers is swap the bleeders and the crossover tubes. So thought I'd mention that, especially if you're going to be painting these because, you know, you'd have to get that done before you paint them. So...
All right, so we got all the prep work. I mean, the sanding uh, part of the prep work is done. And I've got these up here in this bathroom I'm remodeling so that it's a closed environment where I got a space heater that I can run, keep these things away from pet hair, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So what I'm going to be using is this uh, G2 caliper paint with uh, the red color there. So uh, let's see here. I'm not going to be doing this on vehicle, obviously. So blah, 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 blah. I have to clean the services with the brake cleaner that they include in the kit. Uh, masking areas. I've I masked, masked quite a bit of it. The... Um, what do you call those? The wear, the uh, part where the uh, pads slide, the uh, bleeder screws, blah, blah, blah. But it's a brush on product, so all I have to do is not brush it on those uh, pistons and boots. And it seems easy enough, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. So that's what I've masked. And then uh, let's see. So you got to mix up the hardener in with the stuff, let it react for five minutes. Uh, blah 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 blah. Da, 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 da. You can read all that yourself. Okay, so we're looking at 15 minutes between coats, and then two hours when we're completely done. Blah blah blah, all that. That's a different language. And then I don't know why, but helpful hints. Uh, 24 months. This uh, stuff was made in December 19, so it's obviously very fresh. Uh, here's why I'm doing it in this room so I can keep it warm 56 to 70 degrees So there we go four to six hours after it's mixed the stuff's gonna start going bad, so I Have to uh, get all the coats done in that amount of time if I want to do this all in one uh, go which I do uh, Blah blah blah. There's the rest of it. You can just pause this and read it if you want so That's the deal. I need to plan for exactly how I'm gonna do this Add the, here's the reactor, hardener, whatever you call it. Add this to that can. As you probably saw, if you paused and read that, they underfill these so that you can add the, what are you doing now? They underfill these so that you can add the hardener directly to it. This is the brush they include with the kit. Looks to me like an acid brush, like what I have for uh, fluxing uh, copper pipes. So, I don't know. Not a great brush, I guess, but it probably doesn't have to be. And then I happen to just have this smaller artist brush. So if I need that, I'll use that. And then I'm assuming that this is thinner cleanup. So maybe between coats, I'll set the brush in some thinner to keep it good. Or maybe it'll take 15 minutes to coat the other three calipers after I get one done. And I can just go, you know, one right after the other. So I guess we'll see how that goes. So... Uh, yeah, I just got to spray brake cleaner all over these things, and uh, they'll be ready to go here shortly. Okay, the reactor's been added. I guess I have four to six hours of working time. So I'm going to wait five minutes and then uh, start, like I said, painting the front and top of all of them. And then I'll see what it's like waiting the 15 minutes from there, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, well, it seems to be working as planned. So like I said, I'm gonna do the front and tops as a first coat. Got this last one to do, and that's how much I've got left. Seems like I haven't used any yet, so maybe this plan was stupid, but... Uh, just trying to put it on real thin so I don't get any runs, because it seems like it's kind of thin and it wants to run on me. So every once in a while you can see I'll get down to where you can see in between the brush strokes on it. Oh, don't fall when I move this scaffolding, buddy. Please don't do that. And there you can see how it's kind of bubbly. So that seems to be leveling out okay. So there you go. You can kind of see how this silver is shining through in some spots. So hopefully that'll be taken care of in the next coats. But uh, so far, everything's doing pretty good on this stuff. Okay, well, um, it's just about four hours after I mixed this. 
if I had this to do over again, I probably would have painted everything except what is going to show first because that doesn't matter, right? And then I just would have loaded up coats on uh, the fronts and tops after that. Uh, having said that, what I ended up doing is I painted the fronts and tops and then, you know, by the time that, took, you know, got done, there was enough time for the first one that I had done to dry. And so I picked it up and was kind of handling the front of it, even though, you know, it was kind of leaving marks on it with my gloves. But uh, <clears throat> went ahead and did one coat on everything that doesn't show, apart from, you know, I didn't want to cut in too close to those uh, boots and pistons. So just kind of, you know, whatever. I don't think it really matters that much to me. Uh, so then once I had one coat on all that stuff, I had turned them back around and uh, started loading coats. on the. I put one more coat on the fronts and tops. And then while they were hanging here, one last time I put a third coat on the, just the fronts where the decal is going to go. Pretty good coverage on the second coat. You can see a lot of yellow and silver coming through. Actually, you can kind of see... Okay, right there, there's a little spot of yellow shining through on this one, so. It's gonna kinda. Hit that, so then, after I had all that done, I just picked them up by these wires that I've got here, it's just, uh, 12 gauge Romex, 14 gauge was too weak. They just <laughs> fell right off of it. So I uh, <sighs> picked them up and kind of looked them over and any kind of spots that I saw of color still shining through, I just kind of did a spot here and a spot there. So the fronts where the decals were gonna go have three coats. Everything else has one and then just kind of gave it the once over and you know gave it a coat wherever there was some color shining through still. So I've got pretty decent coverage. And then, uh, as far as the amount of paint I have left over, I mean, it's quite a bit. I could probably, if I cared, I could probably keep dicking with this. But like I said, it's about to be four hours. Um, boy, this is freaking tedious. I was obviously a little bit panicked from only having four hours to work with the stuff. That as soon as I had it mixed up and gave it the five minutes, I started right at it. And, uh just now got done. So, I mean, obviously a lot of their instructions mentioned putting it on jack stands and this, that, and the other. So I, I guess most people probably aren't painting every little nook and cranny or the inside or all that. So maybe I shouldn't have, but uh, this was very tedious and very exhausting. It was a total bitch, if I'm, if I'm being frank. So uh, yeah, but I'm happy with it. It's fine. I'm not too worried about it and then we'll see once it dries if the uh, brush strokes level out any they don't seem like they're going to but again i don't care i just want it to look good behind the rim and be durable so you know, that's that part well here they are uh i'm pretty happy with them you can certainly see a lot of brush strokes in the final product but they look pretty good um I didn't show putting the decals on, but I wasn't going to be able to show that anyway. I sitting there holding it on the uh, transference tape, looking at it for five minutes, trying to make sure that it's lined up perfectly. It wouldn't have been a good perspective anyway. So, you know, putting on decals is pretty straightforward. So uh, I went with these. Uh, the thought process was, because I've, I've read someone in one of the forums, or maybe it was a Facebook group, was saying that it should be curved, but the way I look at it, the V logo was not curved. The, the one that I bought off of eBay, it was eight decals, and there were two of these bigger ones, I think four of the middle-sized ones, and then two even smaller than these. And these two big ones were about the same size as the V logo that was on the big ones, and these two here were about the same size as the V logo that was on the smaller ones. So. I felt like that was pretty perfect. So basically, the whole concept is what this would have looked like had these been offered from the factory. So I think it looks pretty good. I'll be happy with it. So eh. that's this part. <laughs>